For many centuries, evil has waged a covert war against good. Evil denies this and calls it a conspiracy theory. They slander and smear people who sound the alarm. Resistance to evil is classified as hate. They deny with their lips what they do with their hands. Believe what we say, not what you see. What you see is fake news. The hunter is most effective if the prey is unaware of mortal danger. The goyim are a flock of sheep and we are their wolves. And you know what happens when the wolves get hold of the flock. Protocols of Zion 11. People are more vulnerable if they don't know they're under attack. They are complacent. They are grazing, an easy target. This must end now. We're in a battle for our lives and for that of our children. It hasn't hit home yet because we suffer from cognitive dissonance. The media deceives us constantly. This is not a dress rehearsal. It is happening. This war is taking place both internally and externally. Internally, every minute of every day, we must choose between good and evil, between right and wrong, between good and better. Every day we are beset by the temptation to do wrong or just slack off. How do you treat your fellow human beings? What kind of person do you want to be? Do you have the will to change? I am asking myself these questions. I have already listed 10 ways we are under external attack. I won't repeat them except to say, I left off the two most important ways. Money and sex. I have dealt with them elsewhere. By making money our preoccupation, we have been inducted into a satanic cult, Jewish Kabbalism. I'm talking about people who have more than enough to meet their needs yet measure their days in dollars and still worry about keeping the wolf from the door. We live in constant anxiety. Enough is always a little more than we have. Millions of investors are glued to the stock market. The world is a giant casino. Everyone can play from their phones. We prefer to forget that the house always wins. Make an assessment of your needs, build a rainy day fund. Then destroy this dehumanizing programming by renouncing material pursuits. Many people spend their lives accumulating a nest egg, only to leave it to ungrateful children. The real gold is not found in the ground. Louis B. Mayer offered an actress a million dollars to marry him. She turned him down. Before I continue the video, please smash that like button for me. Thank you. Don't be naive folks. The people in control of society's lifeblood, money, are leveraging this power to take control of literally everything. Money is just an abstraction unless converted into a commodity or service. Think, what does a billion dollars look like? It is just an entry in a bank account, digits. There are billions of transactions every day. All that changes are the digits. We are playing a game of make-believe that only works as long as everyone plays by the rules. Money is credit that the Rothschilds allow our servile governments. That's why it's called a credit card. The Rothschilds finagle the government's credit card. They create the medium of exchange, money, or credit out of thin air as a debt to themselves and charge interest. Our government could do this debt and interest free. Our leaders are chosen from corrupt third-rate people who will betray our trust and perpetuate the Rothschild scam. The Rothschilds, or the House, keep track of this abstraction called money on a big ledger. They need to re-engineer and enslave us to protect this racket. They destroy our national, racial, religious and family identity by promoting globalism, Satanism, and gender dysphoria. Jewish supremacism provides additional incentive. Why would we trust people who hate us with our money? Money is already a form of social credit. Eventually, they won't allow dissidents use of it. Anonymous X is their second means of satanic possession. We see this in the spread of pornography and the promotion of promiscuity. They are dehumanizing. Stop being naive about our leaders. They are Judas goats, leading the sheep to the abattoir. Whether we like it or not, we are part of a cosmic battle between good and evil. We can deny it, but we cannot escape it. We have been satanically possessed. It's time to man up. We are at war. The NWO is dedicated to enslaving us spiritually. Money is its primary instrument. For the love of money is the root of all evil. Timothy 6, verse 10. None can be an impartial or wise observer of human life, but from the vantage ground of what we should call voluntary poverty. Henry David Thoreau. We scoff at the idea of Satan, but we wrestle with the devil every time we focus our energy on money. People who live paycheck to paycheck have an excuse, but for most people, the wolf is not at the door. Rather, we suffer from a spiritual malice. The stock market is a giant casino. Everyone in the world can trade from their smartphones. The technology is magnificent, I grant that. But the effect is to enslave billions to the almighty buck. 
Gambling is fun when you're winning, but read conversations on Yahoo Finance to see how many people are getting skinned alive and are feeling the pain. Checking stocks constantly. Feeling the rush or the sinking feeling in the gut. This is what slavery looks like folks. Enough is always a little more than one has. There is never enough to say to spiritual hunger. Even Illuminati trillionaires like Jacob Rothschild gamble. In the form of debt, money is a far more palpable form of control. The stock market is a giant Ponzi scheme. Everyone who buys a stock does so in the expectation they will sell it to another sucker at a higher price. There must be a constant supply of buyers to maintain the price, like sand pouring on the top of a hill while the bottom melts away. The stock market today is driven by sentiment, not earnings. Certain stocks are hot, others are not. Evaluations today often are based on what a company might be worth in five years under ideal conditions. Companies with solid businesses and profits often are wallflowers. Money is the devil. He distracts us from affirming our humanity through constructive activity and reduces us to frenzied gamblers at a casino table. And that's just the stock market. The gambling industry is worth $240 billion in the US alone. For most of us, poverty is a state of mind. But we have been hypnotized. Instead of being taught to live within our means and devote our energy to serving God in some way, we have been taught to seek as much money as possible. Get it? Serve the devil. No one can serve two masters. You cannot serve both God and money. Matthew 6.24 We have also been conditioned to shut down at the mention of God or scripture. More proof of our satanic possession. They block the way to happiness. We can reject the devil if we refuse to think about money. We need to mortify ourselves to the world. We need to consecrate ourselves to God. Of course, we can best do this if we secure our basic material needs. This is the salvation we are really seeking. I assume I am not alone. Money is an abstraction, a medium of exchange, a measure of value that can magically transform itself into almost anything. Money is the blood in the body politic, the electricity in the global matrix. Every day hundreds of millions of financial transactions take place. Do you think actual cash changes hands? That would be impossible. The only thing that changes is the number of credits in your bank account. Beyond satisfying our material needs, for many of us, money is a diabolical spell that keeps us asleep. We die without ever having really lived. That's why there is such a cynicism and despair in society. Is it just me? The banks are all franchises of the central banking cartel. So essentially, they keep the ledger. It makes sense that people who want to destroy our gender identity also use money to enslave us. Banks all promote the progressive or communist agenda. They fund gender dysphoria and hire mostly minorities, multiculturalism, gay rights, or anti-Euro-Christian discrimination. Does it make sense for us to entrust our money to these people? I won't go into sex here, but sex is the number two method of enslavement. Men have been brainwashed into seeing every woman in sexual terms. Can you blame female for behaving accordingly? I know I am cutting my own throat here, but don't just tune out money. Tune out the world. Any society that is banished mention of God, in other words, the design of creation, is a satanic cult. Secularism is just a mask for Satanism. We don't want to vibrate at their frequency. I am speaking to myself here. I should restrict my contemplation of the madhouse that passes for the world to just an hour two or three times a day. The rest of my time should be dedicated to something better. We don't know how to worship God. We must turn away from the world to find out. We talk about draining the swamp. We need to drain the swamp in our being. We all wrestle with the devil every day. Comment below with more topic ideas for me to discuss. As a lot of care and hard work goes into this, likes and subscribe, let me know I'm doing a good job. All is appreciated greatly. You may not agree with everything from the content I post. Apply critical thinking and use discernment to come to your own conclusions regarding the content. Thanks for watching this video. This everything inside me channel, see you on the next video. Stay safe and healthy.